name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Pray to St. Michael Chaplet for together all of us. This is very effective. And to call down all nine choirs of angels to do spiritual warfare for our city, for our churches, that they too join us and call down the angels over each of our respective cities. The angels can plunge down from heaven and begin to bind up all the evil spirits and to bring about conversions and purity and goodness in all of our cities, orienting all of us more closely towards heaven, towards God. So a, a time of spiritual warfare, you might say right now, and also a time of joyful warfare, that God, he wants joyful warriors. He doesn't want sad face warriors. He wants joyful warriors. And the angels continuously smile. So it's an opportunity for all of us right now to call down all nine choirs of angels over us, over our families, and over our respective cities. The chaplet has, um, it's built like the rosary, but with a different configuration. So we're going to say one Our Father and three Hail Marys for each choir of angels, for the nine choirs of angels. And we'll end the Holy Chaplet with four Our Fathers at the very end, for Michael, for St. Gabriel, for St. Raphael, and for our own personal guardian angels. That's basically the pattern of this Holy Chaplet, and the beads are easily available at any Catholic bookstore. You can also order them online, and you can also call our offices here in Georgia. We'll be glad to send you one free of charge. So we're going to begin the Holy Chaplet with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Then we use the ancient prayer that's taken from the Divine Liturgy. The priest would say, O oh God, come to my assistance. And the people answer, O oh Lord, make haste yes. to help me. So we'll try that one more time. O oh God, come to my assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Then I'm going to lead us in the glory. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now we go to the first choir of angels. We have nine triplets for the nine choirs. And the first choir is the seraphim. The seraphim are the angels of holy love. Through the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of Seraphim, may the Lord make us worthy to burn with the fire of perfect charity. Amen. Now I'm going to lead us in one Our Father and three Hail Marys to call down the Holy Seraphim, the holy gift of love over all of our cities. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Queen of all the angels, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners. 
spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, let's share the second choir, the cherubim. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of cherubim, may the Lord grant us the grace to leave the ways of sin and ruin in the paths of the Christian perfection. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against against us. And lead us not not into into temptation, temptation, but deliver us us from from evil. evil. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother Mother of God, pray for us sinners. sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now the third choir will be the Holy Thrones. By the intercession of St. Michael and the Celestial Choir of Thrones, may the Lord infuse into our hearts a true and sincere spirit of humility. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now the fourth choir, the Dominions. By the intersection okay. of St. Michael and the Celestial Choir of Dominions, may the Lord give us grace to govern our senses and overcome unruly passions. Amen. Amen. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Queen of the angels, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, full full of grace, the Lord Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, please pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now we go to the choir of holy powers. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of powers, may the Lord protect our souls against the snares and temptations of the devil. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, as as we forgive forgive those who trespass against against us. And And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother Mother of God, God, pray pray for us sinners. Spread spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother Mother of God, pray pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now the sixth choir would be the virtues. Through the intercession of St. Michael and the Celestial Choir of Virtues, may the Lord preserve us from evil and suffer us not to fall into temptation and all of our hometowns as well. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us us this day our daily bread and and forgive us our trespasses as As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray pray for for us sinners. sinners. Spread Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray Pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now the seventh choir of holy angels are called the Principalities. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of principalities, may God fill our souls with a true spirit of obedience. Amen. Amen. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, dear Father, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, beautiful Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. The Eighth Choir of Holy Angels, the Archangels. By the intercession of St. Michael and the Celestial Choir of Archangels, may the Lord give us perseverance in faith and in all in good works, in order that we may attain the glory of heaven. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Father, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. Hail Hail Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, please pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, please pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the last choir of angels, the ninth choir, simply called the angels. By the intercession of St. Michael and the celestial choir of angels, may the Lord grant us to be protected by them in this mortal life and conducted in the life to come to heaven. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother Mother of God, God, pray pray for for us sinners. sinners. Spread Spread the the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, humanity, now and at the the hour of our death. death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all all humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So what we're going to do now is pray for our fathers. First, we're going to honor Holy St. Michael, who defends you and I and our families from all manners of darkness, all of that, day and night. So in his honor, and really in thanksgiving to him, we offer the first Our Father. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 
in honor of holy saint michael our brother our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen now in honor of the second guardian angel the second great angel his name is gabriel so he's called mary's angel and gabri by the way in aramaic gabri means strength and el of course is the ancient aramaic word for god so gabriel means the strength of god Mm -hmm. and that's one angel i call upon a lot that i would have his strength in my priestly ministry I think teenagers need the strength of St. Gabriel to stay holy, you see, in their daily lives, his strength. So we'll offer now in our Father in honor of holy St. Gabriel. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and And forgive forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Then we pray the third Our Father in honor of the healing angel, Raphael. And of course, so the listeners know, Rafa is an Aramaic word for either healing or maybe more precisely, medicine. And so Raphael would mean the medicine of God. Of course, he's in the book of Tobit, and he's an angel that brings to you and I healing graces, even physical healing. Many miracle reports of Raphael's intercession around the world. So now for healing graces for all who are listening right now and for our family members, in honor of St. Raphael, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And the fourth, our Father, is in honor of our own personal guardian angels. Some of us may even have more than one. For instance, if you have a special mission in life, maybe if you're a priest or a deacon or a nun, or if you're the mayor of a city or the president of a country, You'll have a special guardian angel extra to help you in those special, uh, very important duties. For all of our uh, guardian angels now, we pray one more Our Father. Oh. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Then to actually conclude the chapter of St. Michael, uh, there's a beautiful medal of St. Michael uh, that begins and ends the chaplet. And normally we would hold that medal in our hands and pray the two closing prayers. They're actually exquisitely beautiful, these two prayers. The first one, they were composed by St. Michael himself. The first one is in honor of Michael, asking for his protection. And the second one is in honor of the Most Holy Trinity, of God himself, who created the angels and gifted them to us. So we can pray those two closing prayers now. So first, in honor of Holy Michael. So here's the, we'll do the closing prayer together to Holy Michael. O glorious Prince, Prince, Saint Michael, Chief and Commander of the Heavenly Host, Guardian of Souls, Vanquisher of Rebel Spirits, Servant in the House of the Divine Dean, and our Admirable Conductor, You who shine with excellence and superhuman virtue, Deliver us from all evil, who turn to you with confidence, and enable us by your gracious protection to serve God more and more faithfully every day. 
Pray for us, O glorious Saint Michael, Prince of the Church of Jesus Christ, that we may be made worthy of his promises. Let us pray. Here's the closing prayer in honor of the Holy Trinity himself. Almighty and everlasting God, who by a prodigy of goodness and a merciful desire for the salvation of all men, has appointed the most glorious archangel, St. Michael, Prince of your Church. Make us worthy, we ask you, to be delivered from all our enemies, that none of them may harass us at the hour of death, but that we may be conducted by him into your presence. This we ask through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, that's the end of the chaplet, but there is now a tradition worldwide to tack on to the end of the chaplet the traditional prayer to St. Michael that was composed by Pope Leo XIII. It's a beautiful prayer. It's an, it's an awesome tradition. So while it's not official, it's a very good tradition to follow. So we'll say that prayer that we all know right now. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I guess one of the first reasons I would recommend it is because it's the fruit of an approved apparition, where St. Michael himself appeared to a holy Catholic nun. She actually was a Carmelite named Antonia. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her last name, but I think it's Antonia de Astonicio, something like that. It's mm -hmm. a Portuguese name. A holy woman of God. The angel appeared to her. It was tested and approved by the church. And the Holy Father himself approved it. I think it was Pope Pius IX. I need to double check that. But the Roman pontiff himself gave the blessing in the imprimatur. So it's always good, especially when doing spiritual warfare, using a deeply spiritual prayers, to use prayers that have been tested and approved by the church. The secondly is that we're living in a time of such intense spiritual warfare, so much so that St. John Paul the Great, Pope John Paul, while he was still with us on the earth, he made this statement at least twice publicly. John Paul said that mankind is involved now in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the flood of Noah. That was a pretty bad time when God had to destroy the earth and just save one family, Noah's family, in the ark. John Paul said we live in a time that has more spiritual warfare than that time. What? Then he said, John Paul said a second time in another conference, that mankind is involved in the greatest battle since the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now this is kind of amazing for a Roman pontiff, for the infallible Pope, to say things like this. But that's a good, you might say, certification that you're not imagining things. We're in a battle unlike any other right now. And the main source of the warfare would be Satan and the fallen angels. And they are the ones, you might say, behind all the machinations we're seeing. Even, I just mentioned this right off the cuff, the media in the United States of America and throughout the world is so patently dishonest. And it just needs to be mentioned, not with hatred, maybe not even with anger, but righteous anger, of course, is appropriate. But we receive so much dishonesty and deception from the media. And that's a sign of Lucifer himself. You see, he is a liar. And the Lord told us in the Gospel that Satan is a liar and a thief and a murderer from the beginning. So we see on every level the, the signs or the fingerprints of our common enemy. All the lies of the media is unbelievable. Then all the sexual immorality, 
that God is a God of chastity and purity. And so we are called to be, all of us, no exceptions, we're all called to be pure. Not that it's not a struggle. We have to pray our rosaries every day, you know, to be pure, to stay pure. It's a struggle, but it's worth it. So we see this, the mark of the beast, you might say, in an unprecedented corruption of morals throughout the whole world, especially because of the iPads, the internets, the phones, the computers, the television. There's another sign that this battle is unprecedented, and also violence, which may well increase, you know, in the months to come. So we are in a spiritual battle against Lucifer and the fallen angels, and they will manipulate, you know, human instruments like the New World Order and things like that. They will manipulate human instruments like those who developed this Corona-19 virus in a lab. Why would human beings develop a virus that can kill their fellow human beings? Why? Except for germ warfare, you see? So we're living in an unprecedented time, and we need unprecedented help. So God, you might say, in advance, prepare the way not only with the rosary of his most beautiful and holy mother, but now this rosary of the angels, we call the chaplet of St. Michael the Archangel. Of course, God is prophetic. God stands outside of time. He saw what was about to happen, and he's given to the church this marvelous grace of the chaplet of St. Michael. And I would say it's the perfect way to surround your families with all nine choirs of angels. So this is really one of the main reasons why we want to use this. We're in a spiritual battle unlike any other. We're living in unprecedented times, and we need unprecedented help. And help is on the way. Help is here. But remember, we as God's sons and daughters, that we have free will. And so it's really up to each of us to engage in the battle and to use our free will and say, God, I'm on your side. I want your help. In other words, we need to call out to God for help, especially through his mother and her rosary and through Holy St. Michael and his chaplet. We need to utilize these gifts that God has given to us because we are what Pope John Paul called free actors, free actors. And we have free will. We are acting in this drama of the greatest battle in world history, and we have to make a choice. What side will we be on? And to choose not to fight is already a choice. To choose not to fight, you're going to be drowned in the battle that's coming. Mm -hmm. And so this is very, very apropos, even for teenagers, by the way, who themselves are attacked day and night by the media and by so much of our school systems are really corrupt. So many of our school systems teaching our young people there is no God or that sexual immorality is not only okay, but it's actually morally good. Mm -hmm. And so our beautiful young people, they need this chaplet maybe even more than we do. So all of these are various reasons why that I believe every priest and every religious, every father and every mother and every teenager should consider praying this chaplet on a daily basis in addition to the rosary to surround us with those light-bearing messengers called the angels, who are both wise and precociously strong. They can protect us and guide us where we need to be. I'll share with you a true story about the chaplet of St. Michael. It's coming to my mind, I've shared this a couple times in public, one of the joys of my priestly ministry has been to be trained um, as an exorcist. And that's not really a bad job. It's actually a joyful job because I get to see God's chosen people come in, you know, you might say enslaved or in bondage, sad perhaps and miserable, and then using the special prayers of the church and the command of the priestly authority, of course with the bishop's permission, to see somebody set free completely in front of your eyes, miraculously, and to leave smiling. I mean, that's job satisfaction. You'll see somebody come in miserable, including kids, and they leave rejoicing with a whole new life in Christ, with a new love for Jesus who just set them free. Now, that's an amazing ministry. And I have noticed that when I'm at certain meetings or conferences with my fellow exorcists, that they are the happiest bunch of men in the world. It's really interesting. You would think it would be very somber and serious. Are you kidding? 
all of the priests that I work with in the exorcism ministry, they all carry the rosary in their hands, and we're always smiling, because we get to see the victory of God himself, in the name of Jesus, applied to his people in real time. And that's an honor and a joy. I was thinking of a particular occasion when I was was asked to fly down to Belize in Central America some years ago under the previous bishop. And I used to be the full-time exorcist there in that country, in the diocese of Belize and Belmopan in Central America. So when I was transferred back to the United States of America to do like a traveling ministry right now, I received, um, I received calls from Central America from time to time from the bishop or other priests who needed help with somebody who might have been possessed. So I was actually attending a conference in Florida when I received a call from the bishop down there. And he asked me if I would fly down. There were, there were two teenagers who were possessed by evil spirits. And they were in a, a school down there. It was causing great fear to all their fellow teenagers and throughout the whole district of that part of Belize. It's a small country, so news gets around very quickly. So I said, yes, I would. And immediately a friend was actually sitting with me when the call came in at a conference, and he was a, a wonderful fellow. He said, Father, I'll buy your ticket. I said, well, thank you, because I have a vow of poverty. So he bought me the ticket immediately right then on the line, and I flew down to Central America the next day. And to make a long story short, my team met me at the airport, and they drove me out uh, to pray over the two young people. And I told them to bring them to the local Catholic Church so we could pray within the Church in the presence of the Eucharist. So my team drove me there, and it was nighttime, and it was kind of a, a funny, almost a dramatic scene. It'd be good for a movie, because in the middle of nowhere, like in the jungle, this little tiny Catholic mission church, it was dark, and the weather was getting bad, and we arrived there, and it looked almost like, like a spooky movie, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And we got out of the, the van, and first thing I did was I had my team with me plant 100 St. Benedict medals right then and there around that chapel. So I sent part of my team inside to start some, some preliminary prayers, and with my, my, the rest of my team, I walked around the outside of the chapel with more than 100 medals that were already blessed with an exorcism blessing, and we printed them all the way around that chapel. That was like an inspiration from the Holy Spirit. And that medal is extremely powerful. It's recommended to plant those medals, at least four of them, in the four corners of any Catholic property, whether it's a home, a church, or a business. And it literally binds the evil spirit from causing trouble on that property. It's an ancient Catholic tradition. And so I had more than 100 medals with me. This was a a full-fledged exorcism at the request of the bishop. So I planted 100 medals to bind those evil spirits, because they were having very dramatic manifestations all the way around the church. It was powerful. Then I walked into the back of the church after we had all the medals planted. That's like my safeguard for what we were about to do. And as I walked in with my team, the two teenagers sitting in the very front row of this little mission church, one on the left, one on the right, with approximately five to seven men around each one, because they were so strong when the demon would react, they could actually lift off the floor, levitate in the air. Mm. And they were so strong that, like, just a little skinny teenager, one was a boy and one was a girl, but they were awesomely strong when the spirit would take over. So we had five to seven men around each one to keep them under control. Mm. They were sitting there, and, of course, they were facing the front of the church. I came in from the back. And this was, was, was remarkable. When I walked into the church um, as a priest and as an exorcist, the two teenagers reacted explosively. And it's very mm-hmm. interesting because they could not see me. They were looking the other way, and I walked in very, very quietly. I always wear sandals. I have my sandals on. They couldn't see me or hear me, yet when I stepped into the back of the church, a full-blown, angry, growling manifestation And all seven men had to pounce on each one of them to keep them from, like, going into full-fledged fighting gear, you might say, or fighting mode. That was interesting. It shows you that there was certainly there were demons inside of them. The demons were aware of my presence, though the teenagers weren't. 
So as I walked up, and here's the point of the story, I got up to the front, and of course I'm there with permission of the bishop, and I have the ritual with me, but every exorcism I find is unique. And it's especially helpful to an exorcist priest, but I would say to all priests and to all Christians, to follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to have an ear for God's voice and an ear for the angel's voice, to cultivate that, as Jesus says in the Gospel, my sheep know me and I know them, they hear my voice. It's especially crucial when doing an exorcism. So I went up there, and I sprinkled both of the children, the teenagers, with holy water, which gave them another strong reaction. And I touched both of them with a first-class relic, and of course they couldn't bear it. It actually would burn them. And I went up to the AMBO. I had a wonderful team assembled with me, 25 prayer warriors from that region, plus my own team of about eight. So we had a good, strong team, and they already prayed all four rosaries. So as I began to do the exorcism, I asked the Lord, Lord, which prayer should I use? Which ritual? What would you like me to do? And our Lord spoke to me in this way, and he said to me, I want you to pray the chaplet of St. Michael the Archangel. That's a little bit unusual, but still, I mean, God is a God of surprises. And so he can throw curveballs whenever he wants. And he's always right on target. He throws a strike every time. So I said, yes, Lord. And I said, all right, team. I was at the AMBO or the lectern. Would you pull out your St. Michael the Archangel chaplets? Because all of my team members have both the rosary and the St. Michael chaplet. I began to lead all of us in what we just prayed now. We prayed the St. Michael the Archangel chaplet, the entire chaplet. And I'm going to tell you the reaction of those two teenagers was immense the first three choirs of angels, it was obvious that there was a battle happening in the spiritual realm. It was obvious that God's holy, great, and mighty angels were coming into the church, and they were vanquishing the evil spirits. And you know, by the time I finished the chaplet with the good people, like we just did, we did all nine choirs, then we did the four Our Fathers, and then those two closing prayers, when we finished the two closing prayers, both teenagers were sound asleep. <laughs> Exhausted, been quiet, and utterly peaceful. Mm. I walked up to each one quietly, not to wake them, and I touched my first-class relic. I had a relic of the True Cross, and touched each one with that relic, which they could not bear an hour before. I touched each one with the cross, and actually put it in their sleeping hands. No reaction whatsoever. If there were demons still there, even though the kids were sleeping, there'd be a strong reaction. It turns out the kids were completely set free, utterly set free by the St. Michael the Archangel chaplet. In less than one hour, from very strong, they had been playing, by the way, with the Ouija board, and they became not only infested but possessed by evil spirits by playing with, you know, satanic or witchcraft games. They were completely set free. I did several tests to make sure of that and, of course, stayed in contact with them the next few days, utterly and completely free and, you might say, rejuvenated, renewed in their Catholic faith. It was remarkable. And as I finished, I was so um, grateful to God because it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that difficult. When we got all done, we brought the two children. They were brought to their respective homes. The team left. I prayed over each member of my team, all 30-plus of them so that if there's any lingering spirit, they would leave free and have them each um, come up to the tabernacle with me so they were blessed by the Eucharistic Jesus. Mm -hmm. They all went home, and I left finally at the very end, close to midnight with my own team. And what's really funny was that I never saw this before. As I knelt down before the Lord, leaving the back door of the church, I looked up. Just at that moment, I had not seen it before. I looked up, and under the main altar... I've never seen this anywhere in the world. Under the main altar, and I only saw it then when I knelt down to thank the Lord, was a statue of St. Michael the Archangel <laughs> under the main altar. Absolutely amazing. I, I didn't yes. see when I walked in because the view was blocked by all the, uh, the adults who were helping me restrain the children. I couldn't see anything around the altar, only as I left. And so I share that with you. It's a true story, and there are quite a few witnesses to this, by the way, public witnesses, of the great efficacy of the St. Michael the Archangel Chaplet. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That wasn't even that hard. If it can set 
two young people completely free from full-blown possession in less than an hour. What can it do for you and I in our daily life? Right? I had the ritual with me, the ritual for exorcism approved by the church, mm-hmm. which only a priest can use, of course, when he's, and he has to be approved by the bishop. I had that there with me. When the Holy Spirit, you might say, interrupts me, or I say, Spirit, what shall I do? How shall I start? Like with a rosary, for instance. And he spoke to me and said, pray the St. Michael chaplet. So there was God teaching me. You see, I was in edification. So for me, it was a revelation as well. A wonderful tool for every priest in the world to use as well. If there's somebody in his parish who's troubled, just pray the St. Michael chaplet. They might well be released simply by praying your chaplet. Of course, it's good for all moms and dads to pray for their children. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 